Ciao, I'm Mario, a Swiss car guy on YouTube, and this is my 1964 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. And in today's video, I will go through everything that I found that is wrong with this car. And it's not meant to be mean to the car or something like that, but this is a 50 year old car. And I just want to show you all the things that, you know, come up with such an old car. Also, this is not a show car, so I didn't pay show car money for it. This is like a good driver with a nice new paint job, but it has issues and quite a lot of those. And we'll get into those issues in this video. Let's go. This car has the wrong carburetor fitted to it. It's a Holly and it's a very unusual carburetor to fit to a 429 Cadillac engine. Usually these cars have Rochester or Carter carburetors and um, a modern replacement is an Edelbrock, but this car has a Holly and that means that a lot of things have been altered and maybe a reason why this car is not running as perfectly as it should. The train is arriving. This car has a manual choke cable, interestingly one that says Edelbrock on it, but a 64 Cadillac is not supposed to have a manual choke because the choke is activated by vacuum. But with this carburetor they drill the hole in the dash and put in a manual choke. Also the car seems to be down on power. It accelerates well from a standstill because it's a torque converter automatic, torque multiplication, it goes well. But you know, when you want to go faster, when I took it up the Alpes Pass a few days ago, which I realized this is not the right car to go up a mountain pass, but the car struggled to do more than 60. And I reckon it has to do with this carburetor and with a possibly missing kick down switch because this transmission doesn't kick down and there is a switch usually for that on the carburetor and I'm pretty sure this one's missing. Speaking of the carburetor, you see this air intake. This is a bad wing style um, air intake and it's not stock. So this is not the right intake for the car. I do like it, however, because it's in 50s Cadillac style. I know it's not period correct, but I think it looks good and I'm going to keep it. However, I would have liked if the previous owner who put this on would have painted it the correct blue to match the engine, because like this, it's just black in the engine bay. It, I don't know, it, it should be blue. It would be nicer, but this is something I'm probably never going to touch. This car has a bit of a problem with a cold start and now it's very cold. It's about five degrees Celsius, but I think the car should start a bit better. With a bit of gas, it does start. But I think it should start better than it did. Even messing about with the choke, it doesn't really do that well. And it does run very, very rich which means on my new parking spot, I have a big, big black soot stain on the floor. But I don't know if I can address that, but for the time being, I mean, the car runs, it runs okay. Another thing that's particular to this car is I have no history whatsoever on the car. And that means also no service history. And I don't, I haven't actually even pulled the dipstick to see what the oil is like, something I'm still having to do. But I reckon the last service was a while ago, because if I look at the oil filter, it has quite a bit of rust on it. And um, if this was replaced recently, it wouldn't be so rusty. So this car needs a service fairly soon. The front grille is not fitting properly or it, it hasn't been fitted properly. Anyway, it doesn't really, uh, maybe it is proper, I don't know, but it's not held on right. I think I need to address this. As you can see, this piece of side trim is different from this one. And the reason is because this one is original and this is just the glue on replacement. This car is missing a few bits of essential trim, but the seller has ordered them and has agreed to mount them sometime in the spring. I just hope he got all the trim pieces because this is one and it's about two meters. And then there's the other side as well where more trim is missing. Yes, this side is missing also the door trim and not just the rear trim. And speaking about trim, this car should have Coupe de Ville written on here. And I have one side of the trim. The other one, I'm missing the coupe. I just have the Deville. But when they painted the car, they closed the holes to put the trim back on. 
and I'm going to have them put it back on because I agreed with them that I would buy the car with complete chrome and trim and this is not complete. This car has a power antenna but it doesn't work and I have to figure out why it doesn't work. Either it's not um, connected, everything is possible, either it's uh, broken or uh, the fuse has blown, I don't know, I haven't investigated it, maybe also the radio hasn't been connected properly, but the power antenna doesn't work. It's not something that bothers me too much because I don't listen to radio, but I want everything to work. Like many 60s car, the Cadillac has got vent windows or as Cadillac calls them ventilators and the rubber weather stripping around it is very brittle and uh, not in very good shape. I might have to replace it at some point because otherwise I get wind noise and water ingress. And speaking of wind noise, the passenger side window doesn't fully close. So I have a constant wind noise in the car and I think the mechanism is maybe worn out or something or the tracks are blocked, I can clean it. Um, this must be the reason. Otherwise, there is another reason why a window on a Coupe de Ville might not close and this is due to it having the wrong window because it might have the window out of a convertible and convertible windows are slightly shorter. But in this case, I believe this is the original window and it just needs some help and some finessing closing. You might notice the driver's side door is not properly aligned. It's too high at the back and uh, I think this needs alignment because it doesn't look nice. However, the very first thing I need to tackle with this car are the headlights. Because as I found out yesterday evening when I went for a drive with the car, they switch on and off instead of just staying on, which is a problem because I need light to be able to drive at night. I reckon that it's a mass problem or maybe the light switch is bad, but I will first check all the masses to see if this fixes it because I cannot have non-working lights. It's a safety issue. Passenger door lock. It doesn't close and I don't want to force it because otherwise I might break the key. The rear speaker is completely missing. It's supposed to be back there, but it isn't. This car doesn't have any trunk liners. It's supposed to have panels on the side and uh, some sort of um, tweed carpeting, but it doesn't have it. Back there is where the spare wheel should be located, but despite me having these wire wheels in here, I have no spare wheel for the car. In this corner is where the jack would be, but I have no jack for this car. The weather stripping around the trunk doesn't seem to be complete because I think right here there should be a piece, but I don't have it. So I might need a new trunk seal. Also there are some loose cables dangling in the trunk back there. It might be for the speaker or I don't know what it is for, but there are loose cables and I don't know what they are for. The trunk is also supposed to have some bump stops, right here. And uh, it doesn't have them, so the bump stops for the trunk are missing and I need to source them. The seal on the rear window is mm, quite dry and cracked and has holes in it. And I suspect this may lead to water ingress in the trunk. Because I've already, before I bought the car, it was a bit wet in there and this might be where it's coming from if it's not coming from the seal at the trunk itself. This car has too many keys. It has one key to open the doors, one key to open the trunk and the glove box and one key to start the engine. A 64 Cadillac is supposed to have two keys not three keys. It's one key for the doors and for the ignition and an additional key for the glove box and for the trunk. This is basically so you can give a valet your car key, they can open the car, they can drive it, but they cannot open your trunk or your glove box and steal your stuff. So I got too many keys and I am going to address this because it's very annoying. So I've ordered three new cylinders because I'm going to replace the cylinders in the ignition and in the two doors. So I have again one key for the three. At the same time, this car also doesn't have enough keys. Because while it may have three keys, it's got one each. So if I were to break or lose one of these keys, I'd be screwed. 
and I need a backup, a second key. And so I ordered a new set of blanks that I will have cut um, later on once they arrive. Because especially with this car, with the trunk, this doesn't have a trunk release from the inside. So if you happen to lock your keys in the trunk, you have a problem. This car has electric seat adjustments and not everything works. So I can go back by pushing front. I can go forwards by pushing rearwards. The up and down, it doesn't go up. I managed to get it down the bench, but not up. Up is not working and tilt is working. And then there is tilt. How much tilt is there? So there's another tilt that doesn't work. So I will have to look into this. I, I don't have a manual for this car. This is why I'm a bit puzzled to what the controls actually do. You would think that the car from the 60s might not um, puzzle anybody who's used to like a Lexus with 100 buttons in the interior. But no, I really don't know what this does and I've ordered a manual and it's on its way. Finally enough, I ordered a workshop manual. I have had this for months but I do not have an actual owner's manual for the car. So this has been ordered as well. While I already mentioned that the passenger side window doesn't go up all the way, the one on the driver's side, it gets a bit stuck. So I may have to loop the tracks there and do some adjustments as well. One thing about this car, and that's probably the most obvious thing about it, the interior chrome is all pitted. That means that the metal underneath the chrome has rusted and this is why you get these bubbles and stuff. Which it doesn't look nice and it's not as shiny and as a show car should be but this car will never be a show car and if I were to redo or replace all the chrome in this car it would cost thousands. So I'm gonna leave it like this because in my opinion that is patina. Here is the wonderful choke that doesn't belong here and that says Edelbrock. It's ridiculous. You can see more pit of chrome. This car might have been underwater sometimes. But, you know, it's an old car. I can live with this. The clock is broken. It doesn't work. I have to see if I can fix that because you can take it out and lube it. It's part of the service manual, actually. The shifter should have a little knob at the back, but it's missing that knob and uh, apparently you cannot buy them. They are absolute unobtainium. You would have to change out the entire shifter. And uh, honestly, I am not going to do that because it's not that much of a deal. I mean, you can see on the other levers, you have the knobs and it's not like they are the ultimate statement in style. Ah, it's still nice having them. But maybe I can find replacements or I can have replacements 3D printed because why not? The driver side ashtray is missing the ashtray insert. It has the lighter, which has been well used, but the lighter socket itself is not connected to anything. So if I want to be able to use the lighter, I should see if there are some cables or something I can hook it up to. Because in this car, underneath the dash, from what I've seen, there are quite a bit of cables like dangling around and connectors that I don't know what they do. So I will look into that at some point. Same thing at the passenger side. There is no insert, there is no lighter here and also it's not connected to anything. At the back, we are missing the lighter and the insert. It's missing everywhere. And let's check out our final ashtray. Same thing, no lighter, no insert. Which is not a big deal because smoking is not a big thing today. In 1964, the way I see these ashtrays have been very used. That would have been important. Nowadays, I don't care. I just want to hook up the power so I can plug in 
a USB charger or something like that. Something that's actually useful in 2022. The glove box. First off, the glove box, it's sticking. It should open when I push the button and it doesn't. So if I help myself somehow, no, I cannot get it out. Okay, it's coming off. Also, in this glove box, you see two holes, one here and one here. These two holes should have little bump stops in them, rubber bump stops for the glove box door, but it doesn't have them. And I think this is also one of the reasons why it sticks, because it's, it closes too far and then it, it doesn't fall open. Also in, the, in this glove box, except for all the stuff I have in here, like, hey, the badges that I cannot fix anymore because I need to drill holes and I want to sell it to do them. And also the Deville is missing because uh, apparently the previous owner drove it into a wall or something like that. But this glove box, it should have a light that works. And I have cables and stuff, but no working light. I think there is a bulb down here. It's not fixed to anything and uh, it also doesn't work. I haven't, I think the filament is quite dead. And these being old American cars, uh, they don't have like regular bulbs that you can buy here at store. So I have to order all the bulbs and all this stuff. But I will have to take the glove box liner at least out anyway, because I need to see what's behind there. Another thing, the dash pad, the top of it, it's supposed to be screwed down back here from the inside of the dash and it isn't. So it's just flopping around. And um, yeah, that's not right. I am personally not going to fix this right now because I will take the dash pad off at some point in the very near future. And why, you might ask, are you going to take out the dash pad? The reason is uh, very simple because this little panel here, the indicator for the selected drive mode or gear, it uh, is not illuminated. Everything lights up when you turn on the light, except for this. And I think it would be useful if it was, so I have to uh, open it up and replace the bulb for it. And for this, you have to go from the top, you have to remove the dash pad, and then you can, go, you can access it from behind. Then, of course, there's the elephant in the room, and the other reason why I have to take off the dash pad. It's the comfort control, the air conditioning. Because, as I mentioned in my previous video, this car doesn't have it anymore. It was originally fitted with air conditioning, but uh, in the last 58 years, it lost it along the way. And if you know me, and you know how important air conditioning is to me, you see where this is going. Yes, I'm going to retrofit the entire climate control system. Every part that I'm missing, I'm going to order, and then I'm going to have the system working again. But before I can do that, I need to take out the comfort control unit here, the control panel, because I need to check it. I need to see whether it actually works, because if this is defective as well, I might have to order a new one for this as well. And right now I know it's not working right because this car doesn't have any heating. I know that this car doesn't have air conditioning, but I didn't know that the heating didn't work. And right now it's still, we're below 10 degrees Celsius, so having heating would be a good thing, but it doesn't work. And uh, the only thing it does is when it goes on defrost, it starts to blow at maximum speed to the windows, which I think is something you need to pass an inspection here in Switzerland. But the air that blows is not warm. And since after running the car for a while, the dashboard, the part where the comfort control is actually gets quite warm, I suspect that the warm water is actually making it into the car, but that the flaps are not opening that allow it to mix the warm air with the cold air, because in this comfort control car, it's all operated by vacuum. And if they hacked this together just to pass an inspection or just to, you know, still have some semblances of working, I'm pretty, well, let's say I'm fairly certain, or I would bet that they didn't hook up all the vacuum lines. So the controls from the comfort control system, um, they go nowhere. And uh, I need to fix that because a heater would be nice. Air conditioning is important to me. This will come in a few months, I reckon. But the heater is something I would like to have fixed now because uh, it's cold. And now let's turn it on defrost. Aha! 
huh? But I got whistling noises as well. So I don't think that is working properly. I might have to look at the fans as well. Let's put it on maximum defrost. This is a setting where it should blow warm air, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, that's a speaker actually, it's here that it blows. The air comes through, but it's not warm. And even if I change the temperature, it doesn't make any difference. It's between cold and warm, it's always the same. So basically, if you need to defrost, yes, it could sort of do it, but it otherwise just adds noise. So let's keep it on automatic. But first I need to disassemble everything and also I need to disassemble under the dash. I need to see what components I have. Because depending on that I need to buy more or less stuff from America. I will still have to buy a lot of things, a lot of parts. And it will be very expensive. I think shipping alone will be expensive. But I reckon having the comfort control working again will cost me. All in all with parts and some labor that I cannot do myself. Around 4000 Swiss francs. And to me, honestly, it's worth it. Because again, the car was not super expensive and this adds a whole new layer of usability and also originality, let's be honest. Another reason why I need to take the module here out is because even this lever, it can be quite stiff to operate. Like, ah, oh, this is very stiff back here. So that doesn't seem normal to me. So I need to investigate why that is because I wouldn't want to break it. Because if I break it, I have to buy a new one. And that would be bad, right? So I will actually uh, uninstall this and test it off the car to see if it works. When I bought the car, the sun visors, they were like vibrating around and making a lot of noise. So already I bought these rubber bushings that go over the, the tip here of the, the sun visor. Then you can just plug it in and it won't rattle anymore. It won't make any noise. Also, the sun visors, when I got the car, they were like staying here. They wouldn't go up all the way. But fortunately, there is a screw right here that you can just tighten a bit. And then the tension is increased and the sun visor stays up and still moves. So easy. As you can see, my mirror also is pitted and it also has some you know, corrosion in the glass. But it's the original mirror and I'm going to keep it. This car has a vinyl headliner and it has quite some stains on it, yellowing and stuff like that. I really don't know what it is. I reckon it might be nicotine stains because this car was certainly heavily smoked in, but I'm going to try to clean it. The same way I'm going to try to clean the interior of the car. Because again, it is a nice white leather that I like very much, but it's stained, it's yellowed, it's, it's dirty. I reckon I can do better than it is right now. Also, while I think the headliner should be able to be cleaned, um, right at the back, underneath the rear window, I think it needs some nip and tuck because it seems quite loose and doesn't look so nice. So there I might have to do something. Also the parcel shelf, I don't know, it's probably all right, but maybe I need to address that as well, alone due to the fact that I'm missing the speaker that is supposed to be there. And you might say, well, who cares about the speaker? But this car has two speakers in total, one at the front and one at the rear. So I'm, I lost 50% of my music. And this is something that I think could be an easy fix if the wiring is all there. If the wiring isn't there, then it's not an easy fix. Then it's a hard fix. Another thing I will look into is the armrest for the driver. Because the way I see it, it's separating from the door card. And maybe if I take the door card off, because I already see there is a fastener that's missing. Maybe I can take the door card off. I can try to improve it to make it a bit more oh wow, okay it's falling apart <laughs> yeah anyway maybe i can take the door card off maybe i can try to make it hold better also the door card is not held on very well i just realized so wait a minute
Yeah, the entire door card is actually not held on well, so I'm going to address that too. I don't like this. They didn't even screw it on. Damn it! This should be screwed on and it, it isn't. Not because it's missing a screw, but one is present, so not a great job. And yes, this is what I need to clean and get this button because there is a tufting button that is missing. And the others seem dirty, so I should be able to clean them up. Especially these door cards, I expect a lot to come out of a good clean. Another thing that I don't like and I'm going to address rather soon is I have stickers from the seller on the car. Like this on the window. And he hid them. There is one here in the door. There is even one down here in the corner of the bumper. And I'm going to take them off. Because I don't like to advertise for sellers. I realized that this molding is not on properly because I don't think that that leg should push against the rubber there. Also, there might be a fastener missing there or something like that. Because that doesn't look right. I already built a little license plate frame. Because Swiss license plates are about half the height of an American one. So I bought an American plate holder and a blank chrome American plate, put it all in and then I screwed the Swiss number plate on top of it to make it look a bit more neat. Because otherwise you see the stuff behind it. So that's more or less everything that I spotted so far. But if you've seen something else in the video, please comment down below and let me know. Because even though I may not fix everything, and I will certainly not fix everything, um, it's still good to know when something isn't right. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye.